Welcome to Sundaria, home to Tali's cousin Ilvasar, a neighboring planet to the Blair Crucible. The party has a few days to relax and explore while the scout recuperates. Let's see what they get up to. Hey guys, Brianna here with a quick message for all of you lovely members of the TTRPG community. We have a group of friends who needs your help. Go on Twitter and check out Homebrew Queens at, at Homebrew Queens and see what you can do to help these lovely ladies bring their father back to the table. Let's show them what community is all about. Next couple of days pass, and as you start to get close to your destination, you notice that the Blair Scout, even before you energize him, he does seem to be perking up a little bit more. And when Tali notices, she explains, like, Oh, yeah, we're getting closer to the Crucible. That's really good. We might not have to park right next to it, which would be great. As I'm not sure how good that is to park next to the Crucible related to the energy beings. I'd rather not find out how they came to be. At least mm -hmm. not that way. Yeah. Don't want first-hand experience. Yeah, as you're getting closer, she... Yeah, we're going to a planet called Sidraria. I have a big luxury shipbuilding operation. I actually have a cousin that lives here. He is a big part of getting the supplies and stuff. And I reached out to him. He says it's okay if we stay with him for a couple of days, at least until our friend is good to leave. We live in a nice little area, so yeah, should be fun. He lives in a relatively remote little residential area with all the other people that work with the shipbuilding. So it won't be as crowded, so a little less dress for you, fair enough, if you ever forget your earrings. Those do look lovely on you, by the way. Thank you. You don't have to hide around my cousin. He's cool. His wife is cool, too. They won't tell anyone. Great. Also, their kids are way at a camp, so... Otherwise, I would say keep them on. Their kids can't keep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Farida in the back of her head is gonna say, Okay, I gotta get my new song on a physical disc. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can hide it. <laughs> Wait, why are you... <laughs> what? Why? Hide a bootleg. That's one way to distribute music, right? I mean, you're not no. going to get paid for it, but... Okay. Yeah. Is it going to be the rip-off copy or the original actual the version? One. It might be the original, but it's going to be encrypted in such a way that they can't resell it to not get money back to me. Like, it's going to have all the proper metadata to be affiliated to her account. Okay. Spectra and Tali would have gotten you guys set up with your own personal accounts on this side of things, and they put some money in there. It's not an enormous amount of money, but it's it's enough money to where, like, if, if you get lost somewhere for, like, a, you could live off of it for, like, a week if you need to. I dig it. So it might be a little more than fair it is used to. It is. Considerably. Hmm. Anima, how do you react to having money in a bank account? Wait, Anima, have you been getting paid for all of your military work, but you haven't been spending the money? Um, that's cute that you think Ashen Forge should get paid. That's yeah. real cute. That's super adorable. That is adorable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out the shit list and writes down the entire Federation is good. Okay. Okay. Fair I mean, to not all twice. terrible. It's just... That's Certain people ambitious, that are terrible. Certainly. Ambitious, yeah. She highlights it and increases the, the font size to like three or four times what everything else on the pages. Ambitious. And I'm gonna... <laughs> Tali does not see that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about her that makes you think that she's not ambitious? Um... Spectra does notice this. She just kind of <laughs> raises an eyebrow and is like, we're not planning on going on the killing spree or taking on the entire Federation ourselves, are we? I don't know what you're planning, but I know what I'm planning. Here. Fair We're enough. keeping you on this side of space for now. Okay. Why not start the intergalactic war? Oh no, this is something that must be thought out and planned and be meticulous. And by the time they realize that it's happening, it must be inevitable. Heard it. <laughs> Yeah. Tolly's eyes get wide. She's like, remind me not to get on your bad side. Oh, you'd never be able to get on my bad side. Hey. 
And she does a little happy dance and goes back to what she was doing. <laughs> Please be careful. Don't dig anything too deep, Ferda. Please, at least cover your tracks well, if nothing else. <laughs> oh, this is not this is not a plan for the short term. I feel like this is maybe not something we should be encouraging at all. Yeah, but if she can get access to the Federation, I'd want to know how <laughs> anyway. So, Elena. Tali looks at Spectra and mutters under her breath and says, Maybe we shouldn't introduce them to Maria. And that should be fine. <laughs> I, did I hear did that? You hear who? It was in Dindus. Introduce would be one of the words that you would start to learn towards the beginning of a language. <laughs> would Maria's name be translated? It would probably be Dindus native, so it's probably... it. They would understand it as the word Maria, but we would recognize it. Did BJ freeze? Maybe. I don't know. Oh. He's typing. Oh. Yeah. Yep. She froze. We're on our own. Anarchy! (laughs) (laughs) Well, as long as Craig is still listening, this is the kind of knee-jerk reaction that she has to solving problems in the moment. So, like, blowing up the building that happened when the other ship got blown up. That kind of quick short-term thing. But um, mm-hmm. if it becomes a trend that she becomes focused on doing this in one way or another, that's something that she would look at very, very far down. Just uh, be careful. She's not an active anarchist. And she's... she's you. Mylena knows her to be careful. Yeah. A little nervous about Farida kind of declaring war on the entire oh. governing body. <laughs> You probably have actually seen her have this kind of reaction before. Okay. And you know that it's it's relatively hollow. What did I miss? Actually, while you were gone, we took over the ship and we kicked out all of your NPCs, and it's our it's ours now. Okay, good. I will bring in the big bad from season two to wipe y'all out. <laughs> <laughs> No, we just discussed how <laughs> Farida can be a little impulsive. Yeah. But that usually it's relatively fire blooded. So what do you get on that perception Wait, check? What? You ask me to make a perception check? It might have been when my computer froze. Yeah, roll a perception check to see if you heard what they said. Okay. I'm mentally shaking my fist at technology. <laughs> <laughs> you can physically, we just won't see it. Well, I did that, too. <laughs> 15 plus 2, that's 15. Okay, yeah, you, you heard that. You've heard talk of Maria, you still don't exactly know who she is. You can choose if you want to share that with Farida or not. No, she just heard that. She's heard the name Maria. She's a little worried about this situation. Making sure Farida doesn't try and burn down half the universe. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> That would be, you know, preferable. I imagine there were some people in the Federation that weren't horrible to you. They weren't particularly nice to you, but they weren't terrible. They weren't all my major assholes. Wait. Yeah. Y'all could just roll insight against me. Oh, I'll roll insight. Now that you brought it up, I'll roll insight. <laughs> That's a 15. I was going to suggest that before my computer cracked on me. That's a 15? Yes. And then yeah. Insight. Okay. That's a two. Uh, ooh, nice. Okay, we'll start with Vilina. Vilina, you've seen Farida have this kind of reaction bef- to various injustices that she has been around and while you were watching. Mm-hmm. Relatively hollow. She could carry it carry through with it, but you know that just based on the scale of this kind of response that she's probably it's probably gonna go to a very far back burn. Probably never never happened. Okay. Anima. Okay. You get the same thing because Farida is not hiding very hiding that very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see no threat. All it, right. it might have to do with the flame emojis that she's typed on either side of Burn the Federation. <laughs> Maybe it has to do with the smiley face that she put at the end of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then she erased because she didn't find the symmetry appealing. <laughs> Ollie's not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I dropped it, and then I actually rolled it, and I got a four both times. She isn't. You guys have strapped in because the ship's about to start landing. So you're just strapped in having this conversation. Farida's updating her shit list. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's rather bumpy. This time, Tali is the one to do the communicating with the landing authorities. And she mentions her cousin's name, which is Ilvasar. I love fantasy la- name generator. Alien name sucks, so I borrow from the elves. <laughs> <laughs> and the landing control is just like, oh yeah, we knew you were coming. You're free to land. There's a shell ready for you to take you to the location. Awesome. Thank you. And the ship lands, goes through the docking procedures, and the inspector turns around. Oh, they're here. If you guys want to gather anything you want to take you with you, we might be here for a couple of days see how long once we get settled in. I'll go get the Blair. I think he's still in the med bay. Tally scampers off. If you guys want to go and grab anything from your room, you're welcome to. And there's a little... By now, you've seen a couple of different shuttles. This is... It's a very sleek, fancy-looking one. It's kind of like a miniature limo on a shuttle. Fancy. Y'all gather whatever you need, like a couple changes of clothes, whatever you feel like bringing with you. Mm-hmm. And this Tali comes back with the player. She's like, he wasn't in the med bay. He actually moved to the library, which means he can move better now. Yay. Cool. Oh. And he says we'll only need about 48 hours. He's He can shut into like a low power mode while he does all of his, whatever he does. Great. Oh, goody. My cousin sent a nice shuttle. And everyone gets settled in. It's like very comfy seats. There's like a little pitcher of water sitting in the middle so you can fix yourself something to drink, some like little snacks. So, Tally, is this this your cousin's personal shuttle or is this a sort of company shuttle? Oh, it's a company shuttle. His his personal one's a different design. His, it's probably used it to go to the camp that they're going. It's a couple hours outside of the town. Yeah, my cousin, he does the organizing and securing of all of the supplies used to do the luxury cruisers. And it pays pretty well. I mean, look at the houses. And as you're approaching, the houses look smaller, but as you get closer, you realize that they're bigger than you thought they were at first. And it's not just because you're getting closer, but um, actually... Everyone roll perception. I don't know how many of y'all would actually catch this. Because you've never really seen a lot of Vidindus architecture up close. 16. And Unnat 20. Okay. Anima? 11. 11 or 7? I go 7 with an S. Okay. Seven. Anima, as far as you're concerned, the houses just look start to look bigger because you're getting closer. But Ferda and Violina, when you look closer, it's kind of like angles and the materials that they used were designed in such a way to make it look smaller from a distance. And Violina, you can tell whoever designed these buildings, it was designed to misrepresent the size until you're up close to mm-hmm. it. And you also get the feeling that when you go inside, it's probably going to be larger on the inside than it looks like it should be. You guys have never seen what happens when Dindus are allowed to build their own buildings. Actually, no, you've never. You haven't seen Dindus before. <laughs> Except for Tally. Yeah. yeah. You've seen a couple of that, but like, you've definitely never seen like what happens when they're allowed to build okay. their own houses. And you pull up to the front of one of them and you see there is a Dindus gentleman. He looks to be about Tali's age, but he's Kind of like more of a purple color. And standing next to him is a Promethean woman. She has a silver hair, kind of like Spectre does, because she is a Crescent Blood Promethean. Oh. Tali says, all right, we're here. I'll introduce you. She gets out and starts prancing up the path and then walks back and takes the Lair's hand and starts prancing as he slowly follows her. And it looks kind of comical. <laughs> I follow, and as I step out of the bus thing onto their property, I'm going to click the earring to turn it on. They have a 
pretty big house and like when you look down the street they're all pretty large houses and there's a lot of space between them it looks like they're made of similar materials but like they have very different designs to them it's you know when you go in neighborhoods where the, all the houses are like real big and they got the real big yards and some of them have the gates yeah. and all that yeah that's the neighborhood you're in right now it's not where the super rich people live but they're very well off and as she, like, runs up to hug him, she's like, Ilfasar, it's so good to see you. She just launches herself at him in a hug, and he hugs her back equally enthusiastically. <laughs> oh, God. There's two of them. <laughs> that was Casey, <laughs> by the way. Not Anima. Yeah, as far, like, as far as you know, they're all, they're all, like, Tali. But... <laughs> Good to see you too, Talia. Good, nice to finally meet you, Spectra. And who are your friends? Imagine you guys have all ca- caught up yeah. by now. Yes, I have slowed to be in the back of the group. Um, I'm Violina. It's nice to meet you. Anima. Nice to meet the both of you. And I'm Verita. Nice to meet you as well. That name sounds familiar. Would you all mm. like to come in? Sure. Thank you. Let's get our friend here inside so we can start recharging. Yeah, of course. And the woman is like, "Welcome in. I'm glad you all made it. All right. If you want, I can show your show you your rooms. Oh, where are my manners? This is this is my wife. Um, where is it? Where is it? I it's have it right. Here. I'm like, where, I was like, where is it? It's somewhere in here. This is my wife, Kashara. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you." You all walk inside through the forest that seem a little taller than necessary. And as you walk in, Philena, as you expected, the space is bigger than it looks like it should be from the outside. Fair to Anima, like, it's a bigger entry room than you expected. And the decorations aren't necessarily opulent. It doesn't seem like they're people that sort of show off their wealth. But you can tell, like, it's a very nice space. And as you walk in, Tali's talking back and forth with her cousin. They're, they switched and it didn't just out of habit. And she's asking where would it be a good place for the Belair Scout to rest. And he says, put him in the office. He should be fine there. Okay. And she just, so she turns back to him and says, follow me. Okay, I can do that. And he follows her. She leads him off to a different part of the house. And they all brought stuff with yeah. you, right? Yes. Like, I can show you to your room so you can set your stuff down. Then maybe we could get you guys something to drink and tell you a little bit about the place since you'll probably be here for a couple of days, right? She looks to Spectra. Uh, yes, we should be here for two days. Maybe long enough for our friend. Wonderful. She gestures for you guys to follow and turns and walks through a couple of halls to show you where the guest rooms are. There's enough space to where you can each have a room. At least one of you is going to have to stay in one of the kids' rooms, which she explains. Yeah, they're they're going to be gone for a couple of weeks. They won't mind if one of you uses one of their rooms. So you guys get a chance to settle into your rooms. And she waits outside so she can show you to where the kitchen is. And as you're walking along, she, asks, she turns and asks, So how long have you all been traveling with Tali and Spectra? How long has it been? <laughs> We've been traveling for this amount of time. How long has it been? Only about a week. We met them relatively recently. Oh, so how are you liking it? It's nice. We're not used to going about, especially on such a amazing ship as the Opal Star, but it, it's nice. Yeah, that was... It's a beautiful ship. I wish I had gotten a chance to work on it myself, but I do know some of the people who did. So you also work on ships? Or shipbuilding? I work on more of the design side of things. I'm actually currently, since we got this job, since I design more defensive capabilities, I don't need that as much with the luxury Mm -hmm. cruisers, because they already have stuff Mm -hmm. built for that. So, since Elvisar got this job, I've been teaching. Oh, wow. Helping the next generation figure out how to build better ships and better defenses. Mm-hmm. At this point, you've reached the kitchen. Spectra is sitting there, and Tully's rejoined, and they're all talking back and forth, catching up in Dindus. And when they see you, they switch back into common. 
thing like you want to talk to them about? Is there anything we need to do while we're here to help our friend or any sort of business that needs to be attending to? Or are we just sort of taking these couple days to let our friend recharge? Oh no, he, he should be fine. He's already working on his recovery and getting updated on everything that's happened. He was able to get plugged into the network all right, and now he's just basically standing asleep in the corner. I stayed back with the ship to take care of handling the supplies for the Alliance because they do have a part in building some of the luxury cruisers. Okay. So he's going to make sure those get to where they need to go and there's said he had other business to attend to I'm not really sure what he might just be enjoying some shore leave time because a nice little area so we just have a couple of days to hang out this is mostly a residential area but there's a couple of specialty shops within walking distance I think there's like a little library and didn't you say there was a museum? Yes, there is a museum. It's a relatively new addition, but it's just something on the history of some of the ship designs and the different races and people who took part in it and how it's changed over the years. Hmm. Yeah, so that could be cool to check out. Ah, and uh, uh, I keep forgetting her name, Kishara. Ah. <laughs> I'll remember her name one of these days. Yeah, I helped with some of the research that went into creating the museum. I'm actually rather proud of it. And there's a circus in town tomorrow. Some local performers that are about to go on a more galactic tour. I was, we were able to get some tickets if you guys would like to join. Marvelous sight. That would be wonderful. So Thank don't you. get too excited, guys. <laughs> I was waiting to see if they had anything specific to say. So, but yeah, no, no, that sounds wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's unclear. I don't know if Anima knows what a circus is. I mean, so. That's fair. All intelligence. Intelligence? Yeah, just straight intelligence check. Intelligence. Oh, I don't have any intelligence, so that's fine. Oh, that's an 11. You've heard people talking about them, like there are. Some of the information, so you have a general idea of what that is, but only the concept. Okay. Wonderful. We can work on getting the tickets taken care of for you, and Elvisor has to return to work soon, but I'll be staying here. I'll be in the office if anyone needs anything. I've got some lessons to plan for. School's starting back up soon. I need to worry for whatever my students are going to throw at me. You never know what questions they're going to ask. Mm -hmm. I do ask some strange questions about some strange things. Keeps me on my toes. <laughs> so basically, you guys have the next two days to either hang around and talk, or you can explore some of the different specialty shops. It's basically like a little vacation from being on a ship in a new world. <laughs> Actually, Farida, are your earrings still on? I turned them off when I walked in the room. So when we met them, I, they were off. Okay. They raised our eyebrows a little bit, but they didn't say anything at first. And Ilvasar, after a few minutes of talking, well, politely excuses himself because he does. He has to go back to work. And as he leaves, Kishara just kind of looks at him and is like, So, Farida, how exactly did you end up here? I thought you were in the Federation. Are you all from there? Well, according to the Federation, we're dead. The story is long and has mostly to do with Spectre's and Tally's mission. Her eyes go wide and she looks over and it's like, oh, so they weren't with you before the mission. You found them during the mission. Tally nods. Yeah. I'm trying to keep quiet about Farida because she's apparently not used to being famous and not ready for that. I don't know who would be. Well, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. Well, I appreciate that. But at some point, if you would mind. My kids would love to meet you. Whenever you're ready, of course. Sure, I can humor him. Maybe once the rest of the world knows that you're here, so everyone doesn't get worried about the screaming. Ah, yeah. The, yeah. Is it common knowledge that Farida, even though she's extremely popular in the Alliance, is in the Federation? Uh, that is a good question. 
Actually, wait, no, that wouldn't be common knowledge, so I don't know how she knows that. <laughs> I think that if somebody tried to figure out why she wasn't doing tours and why they could find her in the Alliance, they'd probably end up speculating and then figure finding out that she is a- Okay, okay. In that case, she will say, My kids were wondering why you never did any tours, so they were on all these different sites and doing all this research to find out, and there was some speculation that you were in the Federation, so I have some friends who know some things, namely Tally, and I asked her to check, and she said, yeah, you were Federation. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's me. Are you liking it here in the Alliance so far? Oh, absolutely. It's been much more interesting than the Federation, that's for sure. Yeah. Imagine, especially traveling with these two. Oh, yeah. Hey, we don't get in that much trouble. Doctor just looks at Tali and like, yes, we do. <laughs> we fought bears. Yeah. Tally was almost knocked unconscious by one of them. Maybe not that part. I wasn't going to say that. I was fine. It wasn't that bad. Come on, guys. Shara just laughs like, that's... That's even though my husband's more reserved than you are, there's... Yeah. Some things that never change in your family. Yep. Hey. Hmm. I like it's a bad thing. Oh, well, it just makes life more interesting. And I'd love to stay in chat, but I do need to to some stuff. So if you need me, I will be in the study, and she points to where the door is. But I have some lesson stuff to prepare. Feel free to go out and explore as you wish. And so, you guys have free reign, and if you want to go visit somewhere, I'm letting you decide what the specialty shops are. Ooh. Where would you like to visit, and it will exist. <laughs> hmm. You know, I'll probably look for a music shop. Something that sells both the popular and the indie stuff, maybe? Yes. So, you find one, and tell me, what does it look like? Tell you what it looks like? I can do that. I'm putting you on the spot, but if you want me to take over for something, I can. Oh, I can. <laughs> well, if the street is rather uh, busy, maybe a four-lane affair with... Is that the kind of city that we're talking about? You're not, like, in a big city area, but it's where the more wealthy people live. So, yeah, I imagine there's some places where it's pretty busy, and there is a city nearby. Mm -hmm. It's going to be populated, but it's not going to be super crowded. Okay. Well, the buildings on this street, at least, have a half basement. So you can go down some steps to go to shops, up some steps to go to shops. The record shop would be one of the ones that's down below in one of the basement E areas. And uh, going down the steps, there's a little bit of greenery around a, a little bit of uh, the space before the entryway to the shop. Walking in, the ceilings are low. It's a little muggy. Toward the front of the store is a store attendant next to some kind of money terminal management thing. And next to them is a little tiny music system. I feel like it would be fun if it was an analog system. So literally playing vinyl records, which is about as esoteric as it gets, considering that we're in full-on sci-fi lala. <laughs> the shop has both the newer stuff and the older stuff, and the newer stuff that is built to look like the older stuff. Yeah. If you love music, it's your favorite place. And that it is. The walls are covered in album covers. They're crates that have song after song. Yeah, people are enjoying the, the space. There's spots to listen to some of the music. There's some, a little bit of like a grainy music that is coming from the music system next to the, the cash register, which is playing over some speakers up above. But yeah, kind of cramped. And Farida is probably does have her her fake face on. Clearly, definitely. Yeah, here. of course. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You want to talk about bad ideas. <laughs> I was about to ask about that. I was like, yeah, I don't feel like being that mean yet. I'll let her forget another time. She is habitually using the earring thing at this point. So forgetting would be uncommon, especially since she's being very aware of the issue. Uh, she's probably going to try to find her own music in the store. <laughs> I imagine, like, with most music stores, sometimes they have posters up of the, like, really famous ones. 
Yeah, there's album art up on up on the walls. So, your face is on quite a few of those. Uh, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like your face is taking over the store, but when you look up, it's you. Which I just realized it'll be fun to figure out how in the world is per how in the world they know what you look like. But it does explain why you have to hide your face. Mm-hmm. Like, actually, you've done music videos, so you can tell like they're very cleaned up, kind of stylized, maybe screenshots from some of your music videos. And some of it's like self-drawn art in a couple of the pictures. Yeah, and some of them would be album arts that I have done self-portraits for. This is some of my actual album art that I've made. You've got quite a few posters up there. There's several other faces and names that you're not familiar with. They seem to have a similar aesthetic uh-huh. to what you do. Okay, also so creepy. Probably, like, do similar genres. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's some stuff that's, like, obviously older. Yeah. How long have you been doing your own album art? Did you start doing that? Yeah, it was part of the whole, I make everything myself was the beginning of what I did. There's one in a very, very nice frame that's up near the top, and it's, like, obviously a very prized one. Uh Uh-huh. It's from one of your first albums that you did. Oh, that's cool. That one is a drawing that I did in pencil, black and white. White album background with black drawing on it. Yeah. That's cool. It's up with some that are, like, that are signed copies. Uh Uh-huh. But that one's not. Otherwise... Actually, it might be funny for the sign con because I imagine Farida would be like, no, <laughs> it's not a thing. I'm going to see if they have any more copies of it. So uh, I'm guessing you're walking up to the person running the register? Uh, no, I'm more searching around in crates that would be related to a genre wise and trying to see if they have any other copies. Okay, we'll investigation. Okay, that did not roll very well. Let's try this again. <laughs> I wanted to land flat. Okay. Oh, that's a that's a five plus not very much. Investigation. Oh, that's a plus five. Uh, ten. Okay. It takes a little bit at one point. Someone sees that you're looking for something. I was like, hey, what are you looking for there? I'm looking for the 30X release made Miss Hala. Like the one that y'all have at the top. Y'all have any more of those? Oh, yeah. We should have some copies over in that bin over there. So he, he points to one, and you go, you flip through, and it takes a bit, and you find one. Great. I look at the price tag. It's the cubicle equipment fluent of, like, I know, $25. I don't know. Is $25 a lot? That's pretty cheap for a vinyl. I'd be leaning 40 oh. to 40. Oh, I thought you were looking for, like, a poster. Oh. Is it the poster that's up on the wall? Yeah, it's it's the, it's a poster. Okay, then I'm looking for the poster. 25 bucks seems reasonable. I did get one for 15 at a Rolling Stones concert, but that feels like it's kind of low. It feels like it's a copy uh-huh. of it. Yeah, it's it's about 25, and then you're looking to see if there happen to be any vinyls of it, right? Yes. Or are you looking for just that one, or just for any of it? For that one. Okay. Uh, roll me another investigation. Okay. That is a 17. Okay, it takes a bit, and you find one. So, you're, if you're looking for the album, I don't know how album pricing works. Albums are like 45 to 50. In vinyl. So, vinyl, um, find it, and it's about 60, and someone else sees you grabbing that one, they just kind of eye, and it's like, ooh, those are really hard to find. Yeah. Choice. Thank you. And then they kind of go about their business, just you can tell they're kind of watching you to see if you put it down just so they can grab it because they didn't know it was there. They're kind of hoping you change your mind and decide not to get it. If I notice that, I'm going to go to the crate next to it and look for mm-hmm. another one that is a white background album. Just a general album? or Yep, I do not care who it is. I'm just going to get something that looks similar to it. Okay, you find one. Okay. I'm going to take the two, and with my back to the person that's watching and in front, of, in front of me, I'm going to change the order a little bit, and then I'm going to make a show of putting the two of them in the crate 
where the original one was that I found, and I'm going to pull the one that I intend on buying, my own music, out, <laughs> leaving just what looks like a white album in the same spot. So maybe I found a second one, and I'm putting it in its right, right, rightful place. You're trolling them. I am absolutely trolling them. And you walk away, right? Yes. And pay and leave. They get really excited, and you just, as you're walking here, aww. <laughs> I will chuck, chuckle lightly to myself as I pay for They just kind of shoot you a mildly dirty look and then go back to sorting through other things. I wasn't watching, I didn't see it. Ever meet your heroes? Sometimes they're assholes. <laughs> Good thing they didn't realize they met their hero. Would <laughs> <laughs> you be kind of listening into the conversations around? Sure. Okay. Perception. That is perception is a 13. Okay. You hear a couple of people commenting on your music, but it's mostly just like, it's like, yeah, that last album was really good. And with, when they name it and, men, ta- and mention the songs, you can tell it's the one that you released before the mission, not the one that you're trying to see if anyone will notice. Okay. Hearing that, I realized for a moment that I, my mission here was not to buy my own music. <laughs> I flip the album over and I read the record label and I'm like, okay, that confirms that. And then I go over to one of the bins that is organized by record label and I find the amount of music that this record label covers, look around to see if I can find something that kind of looks vaguely similar to the genre that it is. And I pick a couple of those out to learn more about these other musicians. Okay. And I imagine Tolly's also showed you places where you can listen to other people's music too. Yeah. But how many are you going to buy? Two others. Okay. They're a little less expensive, so that they end up adding to another 40 is this 40 cubal? Let's say cubal equals dollars, because I don't feel like doing that math. I don't know if cubal equals dollars. Because <laughs> as a celebrity, I started out with 200 cubal, so... I don't know how money works in this world. It's a cubal equivalent of $40. Like, you still have plenty of money left. Okay, I will take that and try to find the others. Okay. Ooh, and I keep my eyes out for a hardware store... Or a place where I can find raw materials to start investing in the uh, the suit. Okay. Back to that one later. Violina or Anima, do you guys know where you might want to go? Is there a shop where I could get better weapon? Because I know that this is sort of a residential area, but the Saber's not doing it for me. I want something else. Okay, well, I forgot to mention, so with some of the equipment Spectra picked up at the last one, and like one of the things that they trained you with is they got laser pistols for those of you that have guns. And so like they would have gotten you something nicer, but if you would like to possibly buy a better saber. Actually, what I want is a long blade, because I want something versatile. Okay, roll me an investigation check. Okay, that's probably gonna go super great. I think my investigation is nothing, so... You never know. You can always try again tomorrow. Big ol' five. You don't have any luck finding a weapon shop when you stop and ask people. They just kind of shrug. Yeah, this is a residential area. I'm not getting nowhere with these people. It's a residential area that's mostly populated by people working, making luxury cruise ships. Okay. Is there anything else she would want to check out? There are also a, a couple of restaurants around, so if y'all want to like go out to eat and try something there, or you could go back to the house and eat. Before you left, she would have given you like a sort of temporary key so you can get in. You don't accidentally get locked out of their house. That'd be bad. <laughs> so since I don't find anything, I'm going to go see if I can find one else and see what their plan is. Okay. Back to that in a second. Filena, what are you doing? That's a good question. She would probably see if there's shops for materials, potentially, that she could use to make jewelry. All right. I'll make an investigation. Let me see. My thing is investigation 13. 
you do find a couple of artisan shops, so have stuff for jewelry, but they also have stuff for different kinds of crafting. So it might not be the wife's selection of materials like you're looking for, but they do have some stuff there. Okay. You want to tell me a little bit about what the shop looks like? The shop's in a bit of a quieter place. It's not that the area is deserted. It's just not on the same like main road that the music shop was on. It's sort of inside. It's kind of quiet. There's probably other customers in there, but the merchandise would probably be grouped by what sort of craft it is. The jewelry, the gems, and metals, metal wire, probably be... The gems would probably be farther in the back for uh, security, so it'd be harder for potentially shoplifting. And the bigger, nicer ones are going to be locked behind a glass case, and there's someone there that can show you anything you want to look at. But for some of the ones that might be a little bit more common or they're smaller, not quite as valuable, they're easier to access. Yeah. And they have magnifying glasses and tools you can use to help you find just the right jewel for what you're looking for. Now that I think about it, Vi hasn't really done a lot of research into the custom-made pieces for jewelry making, but she'll probably get a couple or a few smaller gemstones just to sort of test out in case no one really wants to buy. It's not that much of a a loss. Some of the materials are going to be stuff that you're familiar with, but others might look and feel somewhat similar, but on a closer inspection, it's not quite the same. Okay. The metal might have like a slightly different texture to it, different hardness, so it's like different flexibility to it. The gemstones have different hues. There are similarities. Okay. But different planets. Yeah. Different crucibles, too, so. Then Vi would probably talk to the clerks, trying to see, like, exactly how are they different? Is the hardness different because that affects what kind of jewelry can be made with the pieces? If they don't already have facets, what would probably be a good method to make facets out of them? What metal is easier to work with? but is, like, gonna stand up to wear, things like that. The clerk behind the desk, they seemed a little bar before you approached them, but when you come up and start asking those questions, they recognize that you know what you're talking about, and so they walk you through the different metals, answering all your questions, saying, oh, this metal's better for working with this, and discussing different techniques and different recommendations they have and i think they might also recommend there's a jewelry store nearby it's the next door over Mm -hmm. okay and it's all crafted with a lot of the same materials by a local okay so it's like yeah if if you want to you can go they might talk to you some Hmm. yeah i'll also go there i mean i'm not planning on selling them anything but i definitely want to see what kind of pieces they do and talk to them more about i guess their methods the clerk told you that this person hand makes all of their jewelry Mm -hmm. so i'm picturing a smaller storefront but it's all very well done handmade jewelry and some different styles okay and there might be like a couple of people working there so if you want to over and talk to them and we can either just hand wave and say you do that or if you want to role play some stuff here's the thing my is thinking about selling jewelry here, but since she's traveling a lot, she's not necessarily going to have, like, a store, a quote-unquote storefront. And, I mean, she's interested in sort of the market and everything for it, but she doesn't want to come across as competition sniffing out what's already there. So, that's the only thing. I get that. I think the person was suggesting, because... Since you were unfamiliar with the metals, that you could ask them, and oh, they could like okay. you could discuss different techniques. All right, then yeah, yeah, I'd probably not like talk to them about owning a storefront. Just talk to them about their experience working with different metals. Yeah, then I'll probably talk. I'd probably 
talk to him about the experience with metals. And also probably buy some, yeah, gemstones, maybe some of the easier to work with metal. So I don't know how much that would be, but... I imagine you're probably spending a little more than Farida did, but from your conversation with the other jeweler, the prices here are pretty fair. Just because they don't have as much reason to jack up the prices Mm -hmm. as some other places might. Yeah, the prices are pretty fair and you're able to get some good sort of starting stuff to work with in your free time. Just different metals and gems and maybe some other materials that might be fun to play with. Okay. And probably takes about an hour. Just because you're learning a lot of new information. You've done some research, but there's learning things on the internet and then there's learning from someone who actually knows. Yeah. So how much would that be in Cubal? I will figure out how money works in this game later. (laughs) You don't have to worry about running out of money. And since as a celebrity, Farida had 200, like, I feel like you'd have to work really hard to spend a lot of Cubal. I don't know. I was looking at some of the items and they were like 500 Cubal, 1,000 Cubal. Yeah, how much do you actually start with, Lena? I start with 170, but that's as, like, a crafter. You have the 170, and then there's also the money that Spectre gave you guys access to. Yeah. I don't know how much that is. Don't pay anywhere near as much attention to money in these games as I should. Alright, so, Farida, what do you do after the music store? Probably... Since we were trading trade magazines, I'd try to find one that is related to those magazines. Or find somebody who has the logo in the or some kind of workshop like that. Okay. I'll investigation, see what you find. <laughs> that would be a seven. Just sort of walking up and down the street, you aren't really able to find anything. You might see Violina in the art supply store. Yeah. That's not going to quite have what you're looking for. In the slightest bit, actually. So, <laughs> probably by the last day, I will have thought up of looking for that type of shot on the internet. Also, you do happen to be staying with someone who works in procurement. It's on a larger scale, but he may be able to recommend something if you decide to ask over dinner. I might do that, then. So, you and Vailina probably run into each other while you're wandering around Anima. You've looked into any other stores, because I imagine Farida and Vailina would have been in their respective stores for a while, so I don't know how long you would have been wandering before you finally find them. I would have insisted on dragging Anima along. I'm not just leaving the group to go do my own shopping thing. I'm gonna take the group with me and follow them to wherever they're also going. The buddies. So perhaps the music store, the art supply store, they're near-ish by each other. So like when you go out, you can see the storefront. Sure. Anima, would you have followed Farida into the music store or or would you have just hung out outside? Question, actually. I think I would have hung back and seen if I could find that. That's when I would have sort of looked for what I was looking for the shop, but the, nothing. So, just, no. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone in. Maybe you just stand there and people watch? Stand there, look at what was there. Watch, maybe. We'll see what was around. As you've been kind of waiting outside for a while, you've switched from looking what the store has to people watching. You do notice that... There are some stores off in the distance that you can tell are definitely more specialized and have more high-value items in them. What, since blah, blah, blah. It's a bit far away, but when you've been watching for long enough, you realize that the people standing guard outside of the store are Ash and Forged. There's two of them. Once I see them, I watch them. I don't approach them, but I do watch them. You see, they are... Scanning the crowd, occasionally people, someone will walk up and ask them something and they gesture like they're giving directions and sometimes when things slow down around them, you see them talking to each other. They're 
kind of stoic, but they do converse regularly, and sometimes kids will post for pictures with them, and they'll smile for the picture, and they're just doing their guard duty. After a bit, they might get swapped out with two others who also sometimes they'll nod to people passing by, give people directions, so on and so forth. That's your first time seeing other people treat other Ash and Forge like sentient beings. They're wearing a uniform, you said? They're guards? They're wearing a uniform, and it kind of matches. I think that's the hiring specialty shop. Every once in a while, like, someone will walk out of the store helping one of the clients with something, and they have similar uniforms on, so it's like a company uniform. Okay. I was gonna say they have like personalizations, but I'm like, I don't think security for a store would have personalizations to their uniform. Depends on how cool the store was. Also, you're kind of far away, so I don't know if you would really be able to tell if they did. Yeah. But people are being friendly with them. Sometimes you'll see other shop owners just sort of waving at one of them and they wave back. How does Anima feel about watching this? Okay. Alright. Gonna. Watch them. They also do look visually different, not only from each other, but from what they look like in the, in the Federation. The skin tone's similar, but they have different hair colors. It might be, like, slightly different builds. You can see there's more variety in them than you're used to seeing. Yeah, okay. Federation ones kind of look like they've been photocopied, and then make a slight edit, and then photocopy. Right. Okay. Just gonna keep watching till Farida comes out? Pretty much. Yeah, I'm not, you know, not gonna go up and talk to them. She's gonna watch them, and she sort of accepts it the way Anima accepts sort of most things. Like, this is... That's that. This is this. Okay. Okay. That's sort of how I've characterized her. Sometimes, things happen to her, and... This is what's happening now, I suppose. So it's less of a, oh, oh my gosh, and more of a, huh, oh, this is how it is. It's just sort of a, okay. This is my, this is what life is right now. Maybe tomorrow life will be not this, but right now this is what it is. So we're just gonna, just gonna go with it, I guess. I also imagine, like, some people give you kind of curious looks because it's like, I don't think you're from around here, but there might be sometimes when people come up and say, Excuse me, do you know where to find the, this store? <laughs> I don't live here. Uh, I am just waiting for my friends. Sorry, I, I, I don't know where that is. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you might have been security for one of the stores. Thank you, though. Have a good one. And they just... Fuck on. Some of them seem slightly flustered trying to find things on maps, but it's... It, they don't do the stereotypical Karen thing of You're just being lazy and don't want to help me. I think Anna would actually... If that were to happen, she would panic and actually run into the store looking for Farida. Aww. Please help me. I don't know what to do. Anima does not know how to help help Karens, how to handle Karens. I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of Karen types in the Federation, but now that she has free reign, she can get away from them. None of the people shopping here are jerks, and most of them live here. But some, I guess, are just visiting, so just like, where is this? Where do find this? If it's obvious and she can look around and maybe see the name, she'll be like, is that what you're looking for? And, like, point to it. So when you do that, like, oh, yes, thank you. And run off before you can say anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to ask Farida what she was going to do next, but since Farida's currently done disappeared for the no. moment, um... Oh, there we oh. are. <laughs> okay. Farida, as, as you're coming out, Anima followed you, and she's just been kind of waiting outside, and roll an insight check to see if you can figure out what she's watching. Insight, insight. Let's see. That's going to be a 24. <laughs> That's a lot. 
You follow her gaze, but she is watching. There's a more high-end store nearby that has two Ashenforge standing guard. Want to go over there? No. Sounds good. Where to next? And this is, might be around when Violina comes out of the jewelry store as well. And you said the jewelry store near, are near each other, so I can see them? Yeah, it's it, it's near enough to where, like, you, you look around for a second, then you can see Farida with the earrings on and Violina. It takes you a second to remember, like, oh, wait, nope, that is what Farida looks like now. Hey, guys. Are you looking for anything else? Uh, I'd like to try to find some materials, but it doesn't look like I've been having much luck in that capacity. Oh, for your suit? Yeah, I've got this list of specs that I was looking for. Yeah, they wouldn't probably have the metal or any electronics. I guess we'll just have to talk to our host to see if maybe I can get some through them. Yeah. But yeah, what are you up to, Anna? I was going to see if I could find a weapon that was a better fit, but I don't think there's anything like that here, so... Let's ask when we get back. I have a feeling that our, our hosts may know more about the city than us <laughs> and the abilities that they might have to uh, find materials when they want. That's a good point. With all the shops, it's kind of like a downtown area. Not necessarily like downtown Dallas downtown area, but it's a big enough to where you might miss things downtown area. Emma, do you want to see if there's some sort of cooking store that you may want to go to? Or see if there's anything you want to try out? Oh, is that a thing? You can look. All an investigation and you can get advantage because Vi and Farida will be walking with you. So they will also be looking. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a natural 19 and a natural 1, so... <laughs> Take that natural 19, thank you, and this perception check? Oh, uh, investigation. Investigation, so that's just a 19. It might take about, like, 10 or 15 minutes just because walking along and it's decently crowded, not enough to where it's hard to get somewhere, but just sometimes there's lots of people that just get in your way and stand there, which is just so much fun. <laughs> But after a while, you do find a cooking store, and you want to tell me what it looks like? Kind of cottage core, if you know what that okay. is. It has one of those window flower beds out front, and it's just sort of cozy looking. I wasn't expecting this, so I don't, like, have a name or anything. Um, I don't think anyone else has named it, yeah. so it's fine. Cozy kitchens or something? Cozy kitchens, that's fun on the front of the store is like kind of curly cue. Mm -hmm. And you go inside, what does it look like? And is there anything in particular Anima's looking for? The ship is stocked with cooking stuff, though. I mean, there so. might be cookbooks. Maybe. Or like more specialty stuff, because the ship might have sort of more generic stuff, and maybe Anima has discovered some interesting recipes that she'd like to try, but maybe they didn't have something on the ship. Oh, you too. Is there any food that you miss? That's a good one. That was for you two. I know, I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Deep in the tank for this one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there is. Is there a city that would be associated to us from where we got deployed? Sure. One second. <laughs> let me find a name for that. I named the planet. Yep. Hang on, let me let me give you a found name. These names suck. One second. <laughs> <laughs> These names are terrible. <laughs> um, okay, let's just general city names. No, those names are dumb too. <laughs> Get this. Hang on a second. Uh, Sky City names? Are those good? Mm. Let's go with Tempamore. Tempamore. Okay. Back in Tempamore, there was this little noodle shop on the corner, a few blocks down from the base. It was just, you know, this little street thing, three seats, old man behind the, the thing, and I always got this new dish. It was a little on the spicy side. It's pretty good. I think it had, like, some kind of seafood in it? I don't know. It was the cheapest thing on the menu. <laughs> I have a feeling part of the spice was to hide the flavor. <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. That legit sounds like a place that 
does still exist in my hometown. <laughs> there you go. It's called the Magic Walk, but everyone called it Miss Betty's. And the tra- the building the trailer is attached to is gone, but the trailer's still there. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see if we can find some stuff maybe for that. On the plus side, it doesn't have to taste good. <laughs> oh, I would like for it to taste good. I mean, I would too, but it doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. And do a thing where you just kind of walk around and look at things and smell things and talk to pe- ask people questions about stuff. Yeah, see if we can find something that might be um... kind of a good start to a new cooking adventure. Yeah. So you look around, you smell a lot of different things that either smell really good or make you want to just start sneezing all over <laughs> the place. Or... Fair enough. You find this one thing that you don't even have to get close enough to, like, stick your nose in, and you can just get a whiff, and like, nope, not, not touching that, nope. But you're able to find some different spices and some new stuff to play with that is similar to stuff that you might have used, like, you might have used before. Talk to people about recipes or over here, some people talking about different ways to prepare things, and you just... Enjoy your time poking around and come up with some new stuff that you can use to make some dishes and we can decide what those dishes are later. Sounds good. And then do y'all want to keep shopping around after that or maybe take what you got back to the house? Uh-huh. I'm good either way. Likewise. You've been shopping around, walking around for a couple of hours. Maybe you... Wander around and just kind of look at what else is there before heading, taking what you have back to the house. And it's walking distance. You're kind of tired. You're a little tired when you get back. So you guys can just sit and relax. And there's like, they have a little library you can look at or just sit. And when you come in, Kishara says, hey, hey, glad you're back. I'm actually going to be fixing... I'd say that she's probably going to be fixing dinner soon. Because I'm just going to say for the sake of brevity that y'all had an early lunch before you landed. Mm-hmm. She says, oh, I'll have dinner ready in about an hour so you guys can just kind of relax. And is there anything in particular you guys would want to do or just sit around and talk about or anything like that? If... Tally's anywhere nearby. Talk to her more about the design stuff and about not finding any materials. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think there'd be a whole lot around here. If you want, I can ask Ilvasar about where he gets some of his stuff. That would be really helpful. He does order it in much larger quantities than we're going to need for that, but maybe can at least help us figure out where to find places. Also, maybe somebody else ordered something a big order through him. And he can add one more to the order and just kind of direct it towards us and I can pay. Yeah, that's a possibility. Talk to him about it. See what he thinks. Sounds great. And if not that, maybe he can call in a favor to help get us a discount on an order. That'd be nice. I don't exactly have access to a lot of money, so. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to fix that, but once we do, that's going to be great. Yeah, I have concerns about that. <laughs> Why are you concerned? Because money is dangerous. That is true. <laughs> Enough said. We can figure that out once we figure out who the hell has all of your money. Yeah, that'd be a nice thing to find out. And Vi, Anima, is there anything in particular y'all want to do? I think Vi would probably talk to Telly about potentially selling jewelry and like how that would work on a ship <laughs> that's constantly moving. So I'd probably go up to her and say, Hey, Tally, you remember when we first met and I said that I was a jeweler? Well, I would like to sort of try to sell jewelry here in the Alliance, but I have some, not concerns exactly, some things I would need to figure out first. The logistics of selling jewelry on a spaceship? Yeah. Would that's like a site? Okay, could you set up with a virtual storefront? 
how would shipping work? Would we just kind of go to whatever planet we were closest to whenever it's made and ship it from there? Or how would that work? That's a good question. Part of being in the Pirate Corps is we do have a lot of people who are traveling around a lot. But, mm-hmm. yeah, gonna have to do some research into that. I've never really thought about it before. Also wondering if we know anyone who does that. We probably do. And then even getting it to them, and yeah, so, but yeah, if you could research it, that would be wonderful. Figure that out. It'd actually be easier to figure out than some of the other stuff we're trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. This is actually pretty par for the course for life on the Opal Star. Always weird stuff going on. I think we don't want to scare them away, remember? Oh, come on. It's not like they don't know that already. Spectre just laughs and goes back to what she's reading. The ship we met you on did blow up. We'll put that out there. That was something of an unusual occurrence. Even though that was the Jaeger. Yeah, that was much, much stranger than most of the stuff we deal with. Face is weird. It's about all I had planned, because I do want to have the circus thing happen, but I want to actually write a really nice description for the circus thing. So, is there anything else you guys would like to do for dinner? I want to start looking up noodle recipes to see if I can find something that might be similar to what... Uh, what Farida was talking about? Yeah. Do you ask... Um, well, tablets do exist in this world where you can, like, look stuff up, but are you going to, like, ask anyone if there's a computer you can use or anything, or are you going to ask? Gave us tablets, or was that something else? They gave us communication devices, which I think were actually also translators, I think. Unless I wrote that down. They do work as translators for if you ever run into someone who speaks a language you don't understand. It's not perfect, but it'll it, it gets the gist of it, as long as it's a language that's been added to the database, which has pretty much all spoken languages okay. in the Alliance. I think there's just, like, a rack of cookbooks that you can look through in the kitchen, because I'm just kind of picturing everyone's hanging out in the really large kitchen in different parts, like Spectre sitting over in a comfy chair over in one corner feeding something while he's still sitting at the bar. You notice all of the chairs have, like, this open space in the back around where... For their tails? Since Ilvastar is also a dentist, so the tail can poke through. So you just see, like, Tali's tail is just kind of, like, wiggling back and <laughs> forth as she's sitting there and playing on her tablet. She spends a lot of time talking to people online. She's me, but peppier. <laughs> and actually capable of handling herself in a fight. Board the Opal Star is an Esper Genesis 5e actual play podcast DM'd and produced by Brianna Toiber as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. I'm Casey, and I'm playing Anima the Ashenforged. Victor, and I'm playing Farida the Prometheus. My name's Alexis, and I am playing Vilina Sorel the Eldori. Music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what we're doing and would like to support us, please consider leaving a review or donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial. Hey everybody, you want a new D&D 5th edition podcast to listen to? <laughs> well, I know I'm always looking for one. 
So guess what? I've got a recommendation for you. It's called Cheaper by the Dungeon. It's a Dungeons and Dragons campaign following the adventures of Zippy, Darian, and Norman D as they travel to become the greatest treasure hunters of all time. We've got some hardcore action. That's Five, 18 damage. 18 damage. Four, 18 damage. Three. You come through with an 18 damage. You're swinging another, another buster. Swing. For... Another swing. That's another seven. It's 17 damage. Two. 17 damage. Seven. 17 damage. 17 damage. Comedy. Right. So you want to, you want to bet on your friends? What do you want to bet? Uh, they're very lives, I think. As high as it goes. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm ready to win what? Okay. And even some dramatic moments. You have chosen the path you've sown. Now travel to the depths alone. And I, with Royce, I grab him and I throw him over the edge. But most of all, this show is filled to the brim with heart. And we hope that you come and join our adventure and become a cheapskate yourself. Catch Cheaper by the Dungeon anywhere you get your podcasts. Check us out. Love you. All right, yeah, we did it. Oh, I've got to find it. It's mine. Darian, Zippy, that was, that was so good. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah.